I am so excited to show you guys the new King of Text 2 video called Pika Labs. I'm going to be showing you guys a lot of how it works. And before we get started, if you'd like to subscribe to the notification bell, that would be awesome. Now let's dive into it. Okay, first, how do we get to the Pika? How do we get to it? How do we do it? Well, first you got to join the beta. You can go that. You can do that by going to pika.art and request to join. I got a email like a day later. So check that out. And now let's get into the Discord because that is what they are using. So we have the Discord here. They will send you it. And this is going to give you a quick guide on how to use it. So we have guidance scale. So it's very much like CFG scale if you've ever used that before. Negative. Hide, which apparently they are playing with hide right now. I'll show you a better way to do this if you don't want people to see what you're doing. And then we have our aspect ratio and they can be in any aspect ratio, which is fire. And then last, we have our seed number. So if you really want to play with prompts and really try to finesse a specific thing you're looking for, it'd be a great way to use that. They also, they also give you an example prompt to give you an idea on how this all works. And then we go over input images. And this was a little confusing for me, so I'll help you guys on with that. So we're going to go into a generation. And you can see here that just on this, we have somebody generated something. You see a little bit of movement. So all you're going to do is you're going to do slash create and then we'll do uh you know a space battle anime and it will by default do uh aspect ratio of 16 by 9 and you can see everybody else and what they're doing in here get an idea of what's going on what works i find this to be really useful to see what is going to work for me or what is not you can see a lot of just going on. It is going to take a little bit of time to make your prompt. So take a moment. And the reason that we're taking a moment right here is that we need to generate a prompt first before we can do it privately. Okay, so now we have created a video. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go up to the top here and you're going to click on create thread. We're going to name it. We'll just call it by using it in here light and lens. And I'll just type in test or just anything you want here s whatever doesn't matter so now we've made a new thread and you can look over in the generation side over here we have it under light and lens i'm now going to close this and now we have a separate thread for us to do whatever we want so now to create something as you just saw i just have to do create and then i can type in what i want so now i have had some success when it comes to if I'm going to do the same thing, space battle anime, and then if I want to, uh, then I'll add in, you know, like high quality or sharp focus. And then if I want to do a negative, I get confused because it's a dash dash and mid journey, but it's just dash neg. And then we'll do blurry out of focus. And then by default, it's uh, aspect ratio of 16 by 9. But if we wanted to make it, 9 by 16, we would just do it in a similar way like this. And we would go ahead and then create that prompt. So now, let's say you've created an image in Midgery, or you have a photograph, and you want to animate it. So to do that, it's a little different, and it took me forever to figure out it was not intuitive to me at all. So we have our create prompt, but then you need to click on this plus one more. It's not intuitive because it doesn't feel like a button. And then we go to image and now we can upload an image to what we're playing with. So I'm going to grab an image here of something that I've already made. We'll use this one. And we're just going to put in two people in love. And we'll just put in those qualifiers. I haven't really seen. Sometimes it helps if I put these in. It hasn't always. So I don't know how effective these really are. Negative will do blurry and out uh, focus. And then we'll go ahead and create that as a prompt. And while that's going, eventually these will come back and I'll check back in when these are back. Okay, we're back. And this is the space battle anime with the aspect ratio of 9 by 16. And then we have this one of the two people in love. 
And you can see that the fingers get a little wonky there. Sometimes I find that when I use a mid-journey image, it does blur it no matter how hard I try. So just go ahead and do more and more iterations. I am going to show you guys some examples as well of using the guidance scale and negative prompts using the same seed so we get an idea of what can affect what. So we have a fantasy mercenary stand shop on a grassy hill at night. We have the different GS scales for this. And we have 7, 12, and then 15 and 20 when I ran it gave me the exact same thing, which I found to be really interesting. And we're all using the same seeds. And then also there is camera movement in there, and I don't understand how that works still. Now, if we're going to use negative prompts, I used a very long negative prompt in here while also using the GS scales. And I really didn't see a difference between the two. And then I went and did a shorter negative prompt and we got a lot of blooming in there, which I found interesting. But other than that, I didn't see a huge difference. Now, these are straight prompts that I put in of two people laughing. And I had some positive and negative and it got me that. And then we could just have here with a guidance scale, guidance scale of 12. And these people look a little weird. And then when you start introducing seeds, it just gives you something random. It just, they didn't work at all. It's not people laughing. That is for certain. So maybe don't use seeds when using this, but I really just don't know. And then we have a mid journey image that I use as an input image here with two people laughing and it kind of works. So now just to show you the possibilities of what happens when you combine a bunch of tools together, like Pika Labs, Midjourney, and Eleven Labs, and some assistance with ChatGPT, you can make a video like this. Have I told you the story about the night broker? On the night of the blood moon, a quaint shop shows up on a grassy hill outside of town. He has all sorts of knickknacks for a price, like the pocket watch that can rewind time, or the pendant with a portal to another world but he has a special deal just for you. A camera that lets you revisit memories. Every image you capture you can visit any time, but you'll lose a memory at random, like a laugh shared with a loved one, or the first time you fell in love. So choose wisely on what you capture, as they might not be the memories you keep. So we're gonna go over some of the fails that I had. This was the Fantasy Mercenary Stand Shop on a grassy hill at night. The first, Iteration, I was like, yo, this is actually really cool for just straight text to video. Some of the things I didn't like, though, were either the weather or it was, you know, the time of day or like this motion looks like a drone shot pulling away, which is not what I wanted. thought that one came out killer with the guy moving through the scene, but it just took a little bit of iterations to get this one and then the one after in order to really get something that I liked. And then we went with a pocket watch that holds time itself. And for the text-to-video, it kind of got me there, but it wasn't as mysterious as I would have liked. So I went back to Midjourney and created something I found that I liked. And then using Pika Labs and just did the, like clock hands moving, I got something that was close, but was still kind of breaking it. And then this was with a vertical version of the story that I did. And I used the same prompt, but then I just did clock hands moving. And I went through a few iterations of this. And I landed on this and was just blown away at how cool it is. And I really think that mid-journey is the way that we're going to want to go for a lot of this stuff and animating with Pika Labs. And then we have the necklace that has, you know, a pendant. And this was like the first take. And I was like, yo, we're done. I got it. But then I just did a few more to just see what would happen. And we got vastly different experiences that came out of it. None of these I really liked what they came out because I wanted that shop feel and this just, that first one just ended up crushing it. Though, I guess, in retrospect, the vertical one doesn't have the wood shelf, but I still love how that came out and only took a couple iterations. Now, when I did a vintage Polaroid camera, moody lighting dark, it kind of got me there, but, you know, the camera wasn't in frame all the way. So I was like, all right, back to mid journey. Let me make something. And I ended up going with this image. And then I tried to do, you know, candle flickering with the, Pika Labs with that text to video and, you know, the camera input. And you saw that there was like a hand that went in there. I'm not really sure what's going on. It was like breaking it. So I was like, I don't know what this is, but we're going to try. And then this is the vertical version. And I just wanted a subtle light flickering on that camera just to give it a little bit of movement. And then I was like, all right, cool. Let's see if we can get, you know, person taking a picture with the Polaroid camera. That could be cool. And that didn't really work because it looked like they were either looking at photos or looking at Polaroids. That wasn't what I was looking for. And then I just tried it with the camera itself. 
And then the humans got screwed up and I was like, all right, cool. Let's use mid journey again. And I was really happy with how this first one came out using image input. And then the same with this one. And I think that they just marry really well together. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, you know, like subscribe, notification bell, all that jazz. And I'll keep on bringing you the cool AI and like tips and tricks on how to use AI to make videos and stuff. So I will see you next time.